Well, what's going on? Uh, it's game five time. It's also three in the morning. <laughs> uh, three ten in the morning, actually. So, you're not going to be getting... Again, I'm sorry I keep doing it at this ridiculous hours, but uh, I'm just busy all day. Uh, and I don't want to do it when I'm rushed at all. Although, now I'm going to be rushed because it's so late. Um, but, you know, I was going to do it earlier, but I went to, like, some carnival and I... One of these rides where you spin around a lot. I was dizzy. It was not not a good time to look at chess. So, man, is my eyesight getting worse or I need to put glasses on when I look? You know what it is? It's, uh, I have this board real small. So it'll, it'll fit in this, uh, recording area. You know what? I'm going to put my glasses on. Ridiculous. One moment. It's because... It's because of these photos. Without the photos, I used to make the board much bigger. Either that or my eyesight's getting worse, or I'm just tired. Um, so, listen, we're just going to go this, do this one real quickly. First of all, we know Anand's not going to lose. Topolov's already doomed. <laughs> it's two to one. In case you're not following, it's two and a half, one and a half Anand. And I just, you know, he's not going to lose. So we have a Slav. Um, this happened in the last game. So it's like the same line... Uh, almost exactly, and it's going to be his end game again. Uh, he played a6. He did this last time. And then he did some rook g8 move, right? He's he's repeating the same thing. Do I have the right game? Slightly scared. I, I look, I'm looking at the wrong game. Well, we'll see. Ah, oh, last time he played h6, and you know, remember, remember what I said? I said, hmm, my instinct was to go h5, and he didn't do it, and I felt dumb, and now I feel smart. <laughs> Because not only did he not play h5 the first time, he played h6, went at home, took it to the laboratory, and then decided, you know what, Greg was right all along. h5. Um, so, yes, yeah, makes sense. He wants to go knight f4. I, I, I remember he even said the first time that pawn might get a little weak, and, and this is how it'll get possibly weak. But maybe black can just go bishop d6, I don't know. And then how do we, uh, what do we do with that knight? Seems too obvious, though, right? Okay, that's what he did. Uh, he really wants to go knight f4. Um, top love is not winning this position against non man. This isn't how Top love is going to win, but playing with slow technical stuff. Top love is a killer. He needs to mix it up. Um, <laughs> there we go, aggression. Yeah, but you know. I just don't buy it, man. Okay, like, 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 this type of position is not so good. Uh, it looks kind of equal, but the rook's real developed, and, and we, where do we do with our king? I don't know. Um, rook c8 falls to bishop b5 check. Um, actually, rook c8's not so bad, because then we can go here. It's not so bad. Believe it or not. But well, let's see what happens. Oh, he does rook c8. Alright. Just bishop b3. Because he doesn't want to keep his put his bishop in a square. He's just going to have to move back after I move the king up. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, yeah. This is going to be the shortest of all of them. And I hope... Uh, now it's going to draw this easy. Watch. There's not even going to be much to talk about. It's going to be so easy. <laughs> uh, I'm exaggerating a little bit. Obviously, it's, it shouldn't be so simple. But I mean, come on. You know, it's like it's like really hard to win a position like this against a player as good as not. <sighs> now what? King e7. Look, move the rook out. Um, I don't know. Just move the rook somewhere, man. <laughs> uh... Knight c4 looks pretty, like, you know, it's my instinct. Like, how bad can knight c4 be, right? Oh, oh except that then knight takes g6 is, is bad, because uh, we can't take with the knight. So we get some weaknesses there. Um, what to do? Excusez-moi. <sighs> That's not so easy what to do, because uh, there's not so many active moves. If we move the knight, he has knight g6, which is a pain, always. Maybe move the king somewhere better? I don't know. It doesn't look good, though. Can't really move the bishop anywhere special. Can't do much with the rook. Bishop h7, you know, just giving up the h-pawn. It's a possibility. Because if he takes it, then we can go, like, knight c4 and just try to get some some quick counterplay. Uh, 
but you know, you have to be really careful before you start just giving away pawns, especially with a crap bishop on h7. I'm not really sure what black should do. Let's see. f6. Oh, wow. All right, so he really wants to go bishop f7. So if bishop f6, if bishop e6, few options. Rook c2 is one of them. Any, any old knight move, maybe, also, like... Like knight f oh, oh no probably rook c2 only move really because it attacks the rook if knight e6 probably <sighs> knight c4 I kind of like knight c4 yeah knight c4 is fine for black uh, it should be right well I mean we have a few we have bishop f7 idea and then knight d4 and then we trade well, that doesn't look so great. I was thinking of this, then I was slightly worried about about this move. Um, oh, there's a knight. No, the knight, knight doesn't get trapped, so... I don't know. There's something out here. Oh. <laughs> I'm a big professional, aren't I? Yawning. Uh. Oh, my goodness. Well, let's see if he takes it, and then we'll, we'll think more. Or he doesn't. Uh, <laughs> um, gosh, what would he do? I don't know, man. See, if he takes here, we get too much active play, like... We just take an f4 and rook c2 or rook a4. Sorry. So he's gonna go like like knight g7, and then I probably have some move. I just have to find it. Uh, I mean, king f7, knight f5, and then what? <sighs> oh, excuse me. Mm. Maybe two doesn't help. Oh, what to do, what to do, what to do. I don't know, man. Bishop f7 again, like I said. Uh, oh, maybe, there's some, maybe there's some problem with, like, like knight c6, just knight takes c6, and then what? Uh, if bishop c5, bishop f7, bishop d4, oh, that's probably it, alright. Oh, no, but knight f5 check. Damn it. <laughs> oh, let's keep it simple. This is it, alright. This is just probably just annoying. B2 pawn, rook's active. Only down a pawn, knight c4 is coming. Alright, so that's the answer. Just bishop f7. Um, so he doesn't do that. He just takes, he takes his two bishops advantage. Look at that, so sneaky. Um, so if take on g3, he wants to go rook g1. And black, white's idea is probably just to start with f4. Um, knight e5, knight c4 is an idea, but then rook c1 comes and the rook on c8 is pinned. So, okay, he does that. He can go knight g4 after f4 also. Let's see what he does. He can go knight c6, aiming to d4. c4, c6, all our ideas. Uh, c4 seems weird to me. Although, if knight c4, rook c1, b5, it's also okay. But this one makes sense too. Um, which one to do? Bishop c5, bishop b4. So many options that all look reasonable. I'm not going to sit here trying to figure out which one at 3:20 in the morning. <laughs> Basically, you know, they're all move candidates, and if you're playing a game, what you do is you just compare them, and <laughs> you just come which, whichever one you think looks the best at the end, and then you do it. It's, that's basically how you play chess. Um, instant setup ideas: a5, knight a6, knight c5. But it's probably too too exotic. That's like you know for that's for like the typical grandmaster. That's, for <laughs> that's like the that's not what I mean. Like uh, you know whenever you're playing like Jinji, he always uh whenever Jinji's playing like some two thousand player, he always sets up those pieces like in the right way. Like just takes it forever doing it, but it doesn't matter, you know, because the other guys know what the heck's going on. Just, <laughs> just, just somehow get all your pieces in the right spot and then win. So I'm like, you know, you just magically go a5, knight a6, knight c5, b6. Everything's so pretty. But you know, these top GMs, they never, they never do that stuff. It's always like constant aggression, constant, constant dynamism. 
and this four move setting up of a structure. I don't know. We don't pray. If rook d8 pray the thing games. Oh, we lose a pawn if rook d8. Um, maybe I like this a5 stuff. A5. I don't know. Let's see what he does. Okay, knight c6. Maybe he wants to go knight a5. Probably. Maybe rook d8. I don't know. <laughs> and none knows if he's winning or not for white. Probably it's dangerous though for 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 black. We'll see. Whoa. He wants to trade pawns. That's the trick, by the way. When you're when you're trying to defend it in game, usually the best thing to do is start trading pawns off. Uh, if if white takes it with all the pawns, then we go rook g8 and we win it right back. Uh, and now black is going to get some activity in the in the g file also. So we're going to take some. Oh, he doesn't even take. He goes g4. Why doesn't he take? Well, I don't understand anything. If he takes. H, you know, like looking at something like this. Just, oh, F five, crap. Even that's not so worrisome. We just can go. We can go rook g four or something and stick a knight on e five. Like, like, like. Let's say, like we don't we don't let them go. Uh, we don't let them go rook d seven check. We'll, we'll play knight e five first, and we're down a pawn. But this is under attack. This is under attack. It's just it's nothing special for for white probably. Um, so F5 is probably not the problem. Man, I just don't know. <laughs> oh, Bishop D1. My bad. That's the move. Like I said, that H pawn is going to get weak. See, that's the thing. When you get to a certain level, you can see 30 moves ahead. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course, but, like, you know that that pawn there can always be a problem at the wrong time. You know, it's just, it's just kind of... It's just kind of out there to be to be attacked, and you know. So it's like obviously I, I didn't envision this. You just know that in certain variations that uh, that pawn's going to be weak. So that's why when I saw that position the first time, he chose h6 and h instead of h5. I figured it was something like that. Like he just kind of knows that someday it's going to be a weakness. Uh, so now he has no weakness because the h5 pawn is very hard to attack. So. I mean, obviously he has a weakness, but there's nothing too exciting. Uh, I don't know, rook d8? Okay. Man, rook d7? I don't know. And then black's going to go rook d2, I guess. Let's see what he does. Rook d6. And if rook d2, we are forced to trade, right? Okay, I guess he doesn't want to trade anymore. <laughs> I don't know. What uh, oh. H pawn is weak, after all. <laughs> I was wrong. Knight d4? I don't know. e5? So many choices. <sighs> Which ones are you going to choose? Knight d4, that's rook c7. Uh, probably e5, and then bishop d... I don't know, let's see. <sighs> oh, I don't know what to do. I guess by default, e5. Knight d4 seems the only other option. <laughs> of course, he plays a move I don't even mention. Now we have rook d3 threat, so... That move's very smart, too. Check, and then... What? King d8? And then black is forced... White's forced to play rook c3 there, right? Uh, to defend rook d3. And... Knight c6, I guess? I don't know. Um... He'll play something more. I mean, if he, well, he can't go rook c6 because then rook takes rook and then take on e6. But, oh, man, I don't know. Let's see. This game's boring. <laughs> uh, e5. Uh, I don't even know if we take it. We might just leave it be. Because if we take it, what happens is the king comes to f4 and g5. So I'm kind of tempted to just go rook c6 or rook b6. No, rook b6 allows rook c7. So let's see what he does. Okay, he doesn't take it. I was smart in that. Let me just demonstrate. Like, you know, this is all just positional stuff. Like, the king suddenly has a great entryway. So, you know, you got to remember uh, not to instinctively capture all the time. This is a good moment, you know. Because, you know, the first, even, I, I have to admit, I am still a caveman. The first move I think of is taking this. But, you know, the key is to immediately realize that it's not forced. Um, because it's hard. It's, it's very, you know, it's 
lower rated the lower rated you are, the more prone to capturing randomly you are. Just you know, capturing automatically things uh, like like checkers. You know. All right. So, I mean, white's probably. A little, I don't even believe white's a little better, man. I, I still believe that Nan's gonna not lose this position. I, I just think the, the the rook and the knight and the weak g3 pawn and stuff give enough counterplay somehow. Look at this, the king's running back to e1. Come on, man. Rook d4 or something. Knight d4. Knight f5, ooh. Looks so cozy, right? Oh, now he's... I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> and the knight on a 5 looks like a great square, doesn't it? I guess he... I don't know why he does that. Maybe he just wants to stop all play. Go a5, b6, knight f5, rook d6. What's white gonna do? And just let white figure out what to do and not move any pieces. I guess b6, right? I don't know, maybe there's some even better move, but... Okay, knight f5. Oh, because, yeah, that's even better, because he cast it, he can't go king f2. Man, you know, none might be, like, slightly, well, he's probably not better. Let's just put it this way, I would try to win this against, like, some 2200. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it's possible or not. Oh, he's going for the old, because he knows Topolov never offers draw, so he's just repeating, and then they drew, I guess. I told you he's not going to lose that position, man. Or maybe I'm lagging, because it doesn't say... Oh, no. At the end, it's going to say draw. Yeah. Still, I try to beat some lower-rated person. Maybe it's impossible, though. If they if they don't try to... If they try to just defend, it probably is hard. Stick a rook here, see what happens. <laughs> you know, because the knight's attacking something. But um, That game was really boring. But, you know... And now he got the job done. He has white again. He's going to try to go up plus two. I think he gets white twice in a row. Because I think they do f white, black, white, black, white, black. And then they reverse. And it's like black, white, black, white, black, white. I'm not sure about that. But l let me check the schedule. I'm not even going to look at the uh, analysis for this game. Because it was kind of uninspiring. Oh, it's I can just finger World Championship... Ten. Uh, rest day. All right. Then I don't know, man. Uh, where's the website? Anontopalov. dot com. Schedule. Game. Six. Yeah, he gets white two in a row. <laughs> it's brutal. Anon. <laughs> Topalov is down one game now, and Anon has two whites in a row. Good luck, Topalov. I have a good feeling he's going to win one of them. Um, anyway, sorry for being all sleepy and stuff, but what are you going to do? Also, all my money disappeared. I don't know what happened. At the end of every month, I count my money, and for some reason I have a few thousand less than I, I thought I, I should have based on stuff. <laughs> so I can't really figure, because I write down stuff every day. So I can't figure out what's going on with that. Somebody won't lend me a few thousand dollars, please. So I can eat chocolate still. Thank you. Well, I promise one day I'm going to do one of these videos at like 5 in the afternoon. I'm just so busy. I'm like doing all these different things all the time, every day. Um, so it's like... The only time where I really can just at least relax a little bit. It's like seems to be like after midnight lately. And, and you know, then I'm somewhat tired sometimes. So. But at least there's no immediately extremely pressing concern. Wow, man, they got a lot of money in this, uh, chess match. <laughs> Winner gets 1.2 million euros. Loser, 800,000 euros. That's a lot of money for, uh, that's a really a lot of money. It's too much at to the top, I feel like, but whatever. <sighs> They're rich. That's just really a lot, you know? <laughs> uh, because it's, it just dwarfs all the other chess players so much. It dwarfs a lot of them, at least. Um, and, and how I say this, it's just... They're just in a different sphere, these top guys, like uh, these two, and Carlson and Kramnik. I think those are the top four, right? And then Aronian's probably, like, slightly behind. And then everyone else is, like, a bit more behind. Hopefully one day Nakamura will get up in there. Um, just got some ways to go, but...
We'll see. I mean, it probably all comes down in the next year or two. He's moved to St. Louis. He's, they're going to help him train full-time, uh, make sure he gets uh, all the everything he needs, I guess. I think they're paying him salary to just focus on chess. So that's cool. It's cool that they're doing that. I love those guys in St. Louis. <laughs> St. Louis Chess Center. I'm going to be at the U.S. Championship the whole time. It's going to be really fun. Super fun. All right. This game was really boring. <laughs> I promise, man. Well, the next two games aren't going to be boring. Well, it's interesting, because match strategy starts to come into play. Like, once once Anand wins again, he's going to chill out probably a little bit. Well, I mean, he's, he's definitely going to try to win one of the next two games, at least. He's going to try to win them. I mean, if he wins the first... If he doesn't win the first one, he's going to really try to win the second one, because to kind of just put the nail in the coffin. If he wins the first one, he'll probably try to win... He'll always try to win with White. What the hell? You know, he's not an idiot. He, these guys, they 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 almost never lose with the white pieces, man. Uh, I mean, non. I remember he lost to Aronian with white like a while ago, but I mean, it's so rare, you know, with the guys in this level. Also, they play so like especially Topolov, like he can't lose with white in that opening. This boring line he keeps playing. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna look at the chess base. I can't help it. Can't help myself. Another Slav, another draw. It says. Hmm. Yeah, well... So, this is like almost no analysis in this game, because they even recognize how boring it was. Well, let's check my fantasy baseball team. <laughs> how they do today. Of course, I'm just like a ghost manager, I mean... Oh, I had a home run from Jeter. Wow, good pitching day. A win and a save. And another good pitching performance that wasn't anything. I have... It's ridiculous, but, like, I have a general manager who basically does all the work. <laughs> I just kind of look at the results. Because I just need... You know, all my friends are in the league, so I just got to stay in touch with them. Or I just got to be part of the league in some way. And, you know, I give small advice here and there, but I just don't have time to be changing lineups every day and stuff. That's why I like fantasy basketball, because you can get a team where you just plug, you keep the lineup the same and you just leave it. You know, you can't do that in baseball. You have to move it around all the time. It's brutal. Um, our team's better this year than they were last year. They, they have decent chances. Except somehow we're in 11th place, but screw that. It's not going to stay. Uh, Alright, I'm done talking. See you guys. Bye-bye.